I do not consider myself a speaker by any standard. I am a writer and a thinker. And today I will be reading to you something I have thought about for a while and then go to down. It is called Becoming Free of the English Book. My name is Uyari Eji. Now that's not an easy name to say. I know. Being a child and not so easy name could be traumatic because other kids can be really mean. I remember the first time I was teased about my name. I have shortened my name to Uyari, which many people still found difficult. And my classmates would turn my name into an exclamation. Uyari! <laughs> they would either just scream it or say it in sing song voices. Or the one I hated the most, UI, the University of Ibadan. <laughs> I found this so annoying. I decided that once I was old enough, I would change my name to something cooler, easier to say, and then I was sure I would fit in better. I would change my name to Haley or Janet or Mary, something other things would find nothing wrong with. I was so embarrassed by it that at some point I hope people wouldn't ask for my name. And if they did, I would simply ignore it and I would move on to other topics. Now this worked in school, but I couldn't pull that off at home, especially not with adults. And so when my mom had a guest over and they asked for my name, I had no choice but to sulk and take the end. I thought because they would make me say it like four times before they finally got it, and they would still pronounce it wrongly. We would go through, what is your name, Uyai? Uye, Uyai, Uye. And sometimes I would just say, yes, Uye. <laughs> And as if this wasn't bad enough, my mother would quickly interrupt me and say, her name is Uyayedu. <laughs> it means beautiful character, she would add proudly. And then she would proceed to tell her guests the history behind my name. I didn't like my name, neither did I care for its history. I was too young to see the beauty of having a name that had history with it. A name that told a story about my heritage. A name that reminded my mother of my late father a name that emphasized my roots. I was too young to realize that our names are our primary identities. It's the first thing people care to find out about you. If someone walks in here and asks any of you here, who are you? Your first instinct would be to say your name. But I was embarrassed by my primary identity. I could have been nobody. Or better still, I could have been anybody but Uyai Edu. I wanted an English name so desperately and one day, I summoned up the courage and I asked my mother if I could get another name. She was livid. And she said to me, your dad picked this name for a reason. You think you know better than a man who studied all his years in England and still did not give you an English name? End of discussion. I was even more upset. Now, fast forward many years later, and it soon dawned on me, it wasn't just my name I didn't like. It was something much deeper. It was a language that I hated. I hated my language, my own mother tongue. I wanted an English name. I wanted to speak English. I wanted to be English. I preferred another man's language to mine, a language that had been forced on my ancestors through not so pleasant ways. Yet, that was the language that I preferred. Why did I prefer this language? because the society had made me look upon this language as the language. If you couldn't speak it, you were considered stupid. In fact, in high school, we were punished if we were caught speaking anything other than English. I remember when my mother first employed our domestic staff. Whenever she heard her speak Nigerian pidgin to us, my mother would scream, who is speaking such language in my house? My mother was a drama queen, she still is. Now, this domestic staff had simply joined the other millions of Nigerians who had attempted to make this language their own and had been shut down. Even the media contributed to this. In the movies, Nigerian pidgin was synonymous with lower class. This played with our minds in subtle ways, so that as soon as a Nigerian had the opportunity to leave the country, even if it was to Ghana, our West African next door neighbor, they would come back with a British accent.
Many Nigerians are ashamed of our accents and our languages. I was one of them. And since I never had the opportunity to leave the country at an early age, I made a personal decision. I decided I would speak amazing English. Yes, I wanted to be the girl who people said, oh, her English is great. And yes, I became that girl. <laughs> My friends would call me up and ask, is this sentence grammatically correct? Or how is this word pronounced? And things like that. This pleased me greatly. I was finally that girl. I was a girl who was ashamed to speak pidgin. In fact, I never spoke it. I was a girl who got upset when I met people from my state in Nigeria who attempted to speak the local language to me. I would complain to my siblings, why are these people like this? Why do they have to switch to the local dialect? I was a girl who took pride in saying, I don't speak that language. And when people looked surprised, I would proudly add, English was my first language. I always said that with a tone of superiority. I somehow believed that I was better than those who had an accent. I would laugh at the Igbos and the Yorubas and say how poor their English is. I would laugh and say how the Yorubas cannot pronounce the letter H. <laughs> but I would call the Frenchman's accent sexy. The Frenchman who cannot pronounce the letter H as well. Ironic, isn't it? By the way, in 2014, a worldwide poll by CNN rated the authentic Nigerian accent as the sixth sexiest language, sixth sexiest accent in the world. Why then do we laugh at this accent? I am the average Nigerian, and I represent a lot of Nigerians. This is us. We make fun of each other. We laugh at them and say his English is nonsense. Isn't this strange? Because Nigerians aren't the only ones to attempt to personalize English. Americans have done it for years, and they have gotten away with it. You would hardly hear an American laugh at another American because his English was poor. In fact, is there such a thing as poor English? Who would be the judge? Americans all go with the flow, and they have managed to make this language their own. And now there is something recognized worldwide as American English. Now, a little over a year ago, when I first moved here to study, the language was a huge issue. I met a girl who complained bitterly to me. She said, how can they not be able to speak English? How is it possible that in this day and age, they can't speak English? Hmm. Now, that got me thinking. And I cannot really explain why, but I found myself defending the Turkish Cypriots. And I said to her, English is not their language. They have a language. Why should English be the language for them? <laughs> After that conversation, I found myself secretly accusing this girl of ethnocentrism. Only then did I realize I was also guilty of it. In fact, I'd been guilty of it for so many years. I have been ethnocentric to my own people. I have gotten so sucked in with the world language, and I have come to look down on my own people. And for this, I apologize. <laughs> and since I understand that because there would always be a need for communication, there would also always be a need for a universal language, which is in fact a good thing, but, in the words of the late Chinu Achebe, one of Africa's greatest writers, and I quote, the price a world language must be prepared to pay is submission to many different kinds of use. So, in other words, there must be different versions of English if it must be the world language. So I have decided that I must accept everyone and their different versions of English. I must break free from the shackles of ethnocentrism that I have worn proudly for years, and I must, in fact, learn my mother tongue, Ibibiu. My name... <laughs> my name is Uyai Edu. It is full of meaning and history. It is rare, even in my home country, Nigeria. And I will say it proudly, with all the intonations and accents.
I will be patient when I tell people the name because it is not their language. And if eventually they still do not get it, that would be okay as well. I guess my name too would have to submit to different versions. I am done being embarrassed and falsely superior. I will make a practice of speaking Ibibu whenever I meet any of my kinsmen. I will speak Nigerian Pidgin proudly because this is our way of personalizing a language that has been forced on us. Thank you. <laughs>